All right, so for the next, the, for the next portion of this exercise, I'm going to come down to the other side here. All right, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to color stuff different colors. Oh, I want to color the other round green, but look, there's no other round. So let's go ahead and put the round in. Remember, I cut these big blocks out of here because the round didn't work. So let, and, and, and now the round works when I do just that geometry there. Whoops. 0.03. Oh, man. I'm trying to hit that. Okay. Now I'm going to color those green as well. Okay, if, you'll, if you're really keen and observant, you'll notice that this geometry is not tangent on purpose to get that line to resolve as you look at the product. I think uh, one portion of this product is a co-injected rubber and the other part is a hard plastic Santa Pre nylon blend mix. So let's work on this side first. I skip this one. I'm going to come and build this one. We're going to build it a couple different ways. I said earlier that I build these geometries as one big feature first just to see how it's going to look. This is clearly non-tangent area here, so I'm going to come over here and see if I can't jump across there. Control and then shift and then control. Let's force tangency at the top to see how it's going to look. It got confused. One, two. At the bottom, we'll force tangency. Did not get confused. On the right, it got confused. One, two, three. Middle click. Oh, it looks like preview just wasn't capable of unveiling itself. Let's get tangency on this side. Okay, it didn't work. So ultimately, it's probably confused. Go to control. This is where I was just at along that boundary. It clearly got confused. One, two, three. And preview just quit working completely. It doesn't take much to make something as complicated as preview doesn't work. So in the second direction, I'm going to go from this point to a point over here. And uh, I haven't put a point over there yet, but that's, that's kind of my thinking. And in the other direction, I need to basically get my control points to work that way. I'll take the top the bottom of this to the bottom of that the top radius to the top radius simplified already. Look, interesting knuckle that it built out of that geometry. Motorola used to build kind of geometries like that for the top of their cell phones in the late 90s. Let's go to insert mode just before the boundary exists. Drop in a point. I'm, I'm going to ride my bicycle off this cliff and I'm going to land right about there. Do you understand that analogy? I'm trying to build the flow and how ultimately a light reflects off this geometry. Second direction from here to here. Okay, interesting little knuckle, but look, I don't get to control the angle of this thing. I might want to build that little handle here and adjust something, so I'm going to do that again just to let you see it. Go to insert mode. I'm going to build a datum through that point that's ultimately parallel to one of these other planes. You might even change the, uh, adjust the outline so you can build the geometry in a closer proximity to where the actual product's going to work. A lot of people get confused when they see a lot of datum planes. We're just trying to make it simple for them to ultimately figure out how to work it. So instead of building a sketch curve, I'm going to jump straight to the project function and sketch my projection. I'll draw a V basically. A line orthogonal straight down over to the side. Middle click, let's just left click on this curve and make it construction left click, left click, middle click. 
let's take a point check out of it and project it to that surface with respect to the data plane we just built okay now I unveil the boundary blend and basically I, I think I'm just going to put an internal curve in here forcing tangency at the top and in this case I'm going to force tangency to my handle and I can drag the handle around as a, a crowbar can can work on my uh, crowbar to bend the handlebars back on my crashed motorcycle say enough good things about design engine uh, compared to other uh, training courses this is a more hands-on course with what's actually uh, challenges that you would actually face in the field versus uh, very generic and basic uh, step through exercises unlike the cookie cutter training courses there is actually a lot of uh, hands-on exercises that are directly applicable to uh, problems that and obstacles that I face at my work and uh, what I've learned here vast majority is applicable and ha has been used on projects that I've participated on. Instructors at Design Engine are very helpful because they work in small groups and a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, they don't only walk you through the exercises but also pass on good practice and uh, theoretical uh, techniques. I usually attend training after I've encountered problems or have some serious questions about modeling techniques and every time that I've come here for training I've had those questions or issues resolved. The environment at Design Engine is very collaborative. The instructors are interested in your issues and are interested in passing on knowledge. What I found helpful was their top-down design. I love to use a bounding boxes, use it in as many of my assemblies or master models as I can. I also was interested to learn how to parametrically control ISDX surfaces and how to pseudo create C2 continuity and SOLIDWORKS. Since I've attended class at Design Engine, I've directed every single coworker who was interested in any training to Design Engine versus the competition. But this time, let's build it straight across. One, two, right, let's see. Let's right hold down. On, on one of these handles here, force tangency. Second direction. So what I'm doing now is I'm limiting the scope of that bend. This, this guy here is coming out of here. I'm gonna lock it right into here. Put a point on there. Point, that point was a percentage distance across. Hide that. Let's see. Let's just let's just build build a curve on there first. See how it looks. We'll force. Uh, let's do the control points first. <laughs> I like it. Let's see, we got to get tangency to occur. Usually you can use preview to see if tangency is confused or not, but remember we've learned that it doesn't take much to make a complicated model. <coughs> so preview doesn't work. Oh, the bottom part's still going to the wrong one. There we go. Much nicer. <laughs>